Now, when it comes to doing time, I want you to know that there's levels to things. All right. Just like when you're a young kid, you know, your biggest fear is getting sent to the principal's office when you're in school. Or when you're on the streets, your biggest fear is to get sent to the county jail. Well, inside of prison, a lot of people's biggest fear is getting sent to confinement, aka the box. So for this video here, I'm going to finally be answering a couple of my, you know, supporters comments. And I'm going to let y'all know how it is that I survived and how you could possibly survive while doing confinement time inside of prison. Let's get into it. Ha ha, I'm the best. Finna be this way till I EOS. Take it how you want, nigga. Yeah, I'm a pro. Fuck around, I'll bust your lot while you're at Vizzo. I hate to be this way, but I live for the moment. Waking up every day, show me an opponent. Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks. So much pool, I can even start you from the box. You don't wanna pay rent? Got me bent. Got lacks on deck, your money was well spent. Vultures on the prowl, so don't try test and step two. Cause violent first steps, finessing. You a hold down man? Suitcase this. My cell phone and my charger don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing? You gon' get it. Next time I see you ass, you gon' leave airlifted. What's up, y'all? You already know, man. K for all TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and do me that solid favor, man. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And also make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Today I'm going to be trying to break it down the best way I can to help people understand how you survive going to confinement. Okay? Now, just like some days be, you know, bad and they can get, you know, better, some days can be bad and they can get worse. All right? Now, which that means is... When you find yourself locked up, you got to take the good with the good and the bad with the bad, all right? And you might possibly find yourself going to confinement inside a prison. And that's a thing that a lot of people be scared to do and they try to avoid, you know? Even if they're not scared initially, they'll still try to avoid it because who wants to volunteer to go to the box? You see what I'm saying? But at the same time, there's ways to kind of cope with it to where it don't make no difference. You know, if you're on the compound or if you're in confinement, you know what I'm saying? If you know how to do time, you know how to do time. I was one of them type of people. It didn't matter where it was that I ended up getting put. It don't matter if they put me in confinement for two days, 20 days, 50 days, 180 days. It doesn't matter because regardless, it's time. You feel me? It don't matter how long you put me back there. Time's still rolling. You see, and don't get me wrong, it's still the same amount of 24 hours. You feel me? Everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. So regardless, we still have the same amount of time locked up. It's just all on who's dwelling and thinking about the time mostly. And when you find yourself in confinement, you kind of go a little crazy and you can't help but to think about your time more, you know, well, for most people, you know, that's what I'll say. Now, had a couple people, you know, in my comment section, I seen they wanted me to explain how I survive confinement or how it is that you can survive confinement. And the easiest answer that I can give y'all is just get with the program and get used to it. Lock it in your mind to where you realize and you know there ain't nothing you can do. You know what I'm saying? You are in that box until they say otherwise. There isn't no changing that, you know, whether you sit back there and you complain or you're miserable or if you're happy or if you're not really caring that they put you back there, the time is still rolling the same speed. You see what I'm saying? So I was always, you know, had it in my mind ever since I was real little that no matter where I end up, whether it was juvenile programs, detention centers, jail, prison, I was not going to be in there, you know, upset. You get what I'm saying? I might be pissed off that I'm locked up. Don't get me wrong. I'm not happy. But at the same time, I'm not going to let it get the best of me because no matter where you are, you can make good times out of it. You see? And all you got to do is try to work extra hard to keep your mind occupied while you're in confinement. You see, that's the key to getting, you know, through prison. Because when you're locked up, you know, all you can do is think about the outside world. And, you know, you wonder what's going on out there. You wonder what this person's doing. You think, damn, it's Friday. I know all my dolls are out here hanging out. Or, damn, everybody's probably at, what's it called right now, partying. They probably with females. They probably drinking. You know, you go to thinking of all the things that you're missing out on. You feel me? But you fail to realize that you're going to see them again. You're going to see them same places again. You're going to have them same, 
you know, hangouts you can eventually go to again, you know, or you can make your own hangouts while you're locked up. You see, the less time you spend thinking about the outside world and that you are locked up, the easier it is to do time. And before you know it, time flew by. Whether you do got a release date or you don't. If you don't got a release date, time's still gonna fly. And before you know it, you'll realize you've been locked up 20 years. And you'll be like, damn, time flew since I've been here. So you, you should already know how to cope with doing the time, okay? Now, me, every time I got put in confinement, first thing I did was get ready for the storm. And what I mean by that is I'm prepared for whatever type of weather is on the way. I'm prepared to be treated like shit. I'm prepared to be starving. I'm prepared to not have access to anything. So I'm gonna try all I can to try to make it to where it's easier for me to get through it. It's kind of like when you first go to the county jail. I don't know how y'all do it, but me, Every time I went to the county jail, the first time that I was allowed to order, first thing I ordered down here in Broward County was a starter pack. That's what it's called. And it comes with like a sweater. It comes with, you know, deck of cards. It comes with a bunch of things you'll need. Show, shampoo, you know, stuff that's for your starter to get ready to be back there for a little while. You see, because you know you're not getting out in two days it's the starter pack you feel me so me i get ready for the storm when i first go to confinement you know and it's like if you know you're going then you got a better chance of prepping you know you got a better chance of make sure you got some books on standby and if they take the books so you can't get them you just make sure you got things in order with runarounds which are you know considered trustees you feel me and as long as you got a good face card with runarounds, you know, you always want to keep them like in your pocket, even when you're on the compound. You know, people that work in confinement, you want to make it to where they know who you are and you know who they are. So that way, if you find yourself back there in the box, you know a familiar face and they know your face. So when you come back there, you can kind of like place an order and tell them, look, bro, I need you to go to what's it called and get such and such, bro. He going to give you something from me, bro. And you know, blah, 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 bless you. I'm going to pay you. I'm gonna... And they're not really going to do that for a nobody unless they're really, really desperately in need of some money or some food or something like that. You feel me? But if they know you nine times out of 10, they'll feel like, you're gonna get back on the compound. They wanna keep their face good with you, so they'll do it. You see what I'm saying? So every time I went to confinement, I already knew who worked back there. So as I'd see them boys coming in from, you know, confinement, you know, on and off duty of their jobs while I was free on the compound, you know, and hearing from, you know, word of mouth, it travels, you know, got homeboys going to confinement, seeing other homeboys give something to them to bring to that person. You learn it all by paying attention and being out there, you know. It's like you're planting the seeds now for the trees to grow later on in the future, you see. And then every time I'd go back there, all of rip. I'd see them boys and I'd be like, yo, da 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 da. And then they'd come out the door, frog, damn, bro. I'd be like, hey, look, I need you to run down there to B dorm, go see such and such in quad two. You feel me? And 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 tell them for all need a blah 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 blah. You know, and then they'd go down there and they'd handle that because they want to keep a good face with me. You see, that's how it is. You know, you gotta basically make it to where you 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 open up as many doors as you can when it comes to needing things while you are back there. Because when you go to confinement, depending on the institution you're at, they're gonna take all your stuff. You know, they're gonna take majority of your property and put it inside the property room, you feel me? Which is like books, your MP or whatever you listen to, anything you draw with, your your writing utensils. The only thing that they're gonna allow you to have while you were back there is your uniform, which is, you know, your blues, that's what they call it down here. And they're gonna give you sheets, they're gonna give you blankets, they're gonna give everything. You're not even allowed to have your own mattress back there. They're gonna give you a mat when you go back there. You know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to be wearing socks back there. They're gonna take all your underclothes, except for your boxers. They're gonna take your shirts. They're gonna take your gym shorts. They're gonna take all your socks. All that's gonna get put in your property. Unless you land at a camp that's more, you know, lenient with the guards, you know, to where they really don't care, which I've been to institutions like that also, where you go to confinement and they give you all your shit. Your whole mat and everything, you know what I'm saying? You look, you got all your canteen, you got your MP back there, your books. They got whatever was in your locker. So they ain't got to do the paperwork and, and write it up inside of the property room for you. They give you all that shit, you see? So that makes it a whole lot easier also. 
Now, if you're at an institution like that, then you kind of like skipped, you know, a major part of having to figure out things ahead of time. But just like, you know, a, a, a water bottle, you know, after a while, you're going to run out of that water. So you're going to run out of everything that you brought with you in confinement eventually. And you're still going to need them runarounds, you know what I'm saying? You're still going to need them people to make plays for you and go get stuff or else you're going to be back there starving. Stomach going to be touching your back, you know what I'm saying? So me, I always wanted to keep my face good with people I knew that worked in confinement. All right. Now, another thing that I did in order to survive in confinement, and I think it'll work for a lot of people, is read. And believe it or not, it'd be things that I don't even remember reading. You know, it'd be things that I would never find myself interested in at all. Like, whatsoever would I ever plan on reading anything like this. But it was just something to get my mind off the time. And it was like I was relaxing. I literally would lay back in my bunk and pull out a magazine that I got slid under my door from a different person in a different cell. Or it'd be a book I got my hands on. Or it could be something that the chapel came around and handed out. Just anything to just read, you know, like you want to believe how sharper you become and how, you know, good it is for you. And it helps your focusing. When you read, you get what I'm saying? So it's like, when you go so long without reading, even though you know how to read, you know, you might read little things on the walls and different places and stuff. But as far as sitting back, opening up a book and taking time to read, as you do that while you're in confinement, you realize, you know, like you're becoming more focused on things. You know, it, it kind of opens up a third eye, you know, and helps you get through stuff. Me, that's one of the things I love to do while I was in confinement. And another thing. What I did while I was in confinement that a lot of people might not choose this one is, is I acted an ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, believe it or not, the guards knew me. They knew who I was. They know how I got down. They knew everything. You feel me? So I turned up a lot. I'd bang on the door. I'd be rapping. I'd be singing. I'd be yelling through the thing back and forth to people from different cells. We'd be fishing from cell to cell. We'd be jumping up on the toilet, yelling at the vent through each, to each other. Like I was involved in all of it because at the end of the day it's like I always wanted to put it in my mind like I said I wanted to take the good with the good not the bad with the bad so I always wanted to feel like regardless where they put me I'm gonna be me and I found myself helping not just myself but other people get through their confinement time because I'm always the laugh of the, of the circle. I'm always the one that's going to be like, nah, oh hell nah, you're going to let him talk to you. Or, you know, I'm the one that keeps it going, you know. I make it to where I get everybody's mind off that time. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people go to confinement and they shut down. They get in their shell. And before you know it, they're back there so miserable that when they get out, they're like scared straight. You see, if that shit didn't work more than it didn't, they won't really have confinement. You think about it. If confinement did not work at all, if everybody was strong enough to cope with surviving inside of confinement, they wouldn't have it as being a major thing inside of every institution. You think about it. It breaks more people than it doesn't. So me, the meaning of this video is to try to help it to where it don't break you. You know, you just learn how to cope with it because at the end of the day, you can't change nothing. You know, and once you're familiar with the schedule and how it goes inside of confinement, you know, you'll be able to orchestrate and learn. So next time if you go, it ain't that bad because you already know how to do box time. You feel me? Like I'll never forget at one institution, they used to try to piss us off because they would put us in the shower for like five minutes, take us out bring us and as they're escorting us back from the shower you know all we got on is our boxers and we're holding our soap or our soap dish in our hands our hands are behind our back and we're handcuffed being escorted back from the showers to our cell they'd sit you down in a chair and shave your head so that way all your hair falls on you and you might still be wet a little bit because they only they grabbed the towel and ripped the towel in half so you got like a washcloth you know to 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 dry off with See, this was one of the institutions where they gave you everything. You know, you didn't get to bring shit in confinement. You know, just your uniform and your boxers. And you had to swap your uniform every few days. That was it. But when it came time to showering, you got to stick your hands out in the flat. Nothing on but your shower slides and your boxers. And you got your, you know, your, you can carry your soap or your soap dish in your hand. And as you walk over there, boom, in the shower, they literally put a piece of towel right there for you to wash with. And then you got to throw it out. Like before they let you out of the cage, you got to throw it on the ground out there. And then they got a guy out there sweeping them on to a pile. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like 
some institutions I've been to, you know, you got your own towel. You can dry off completely. But there, they would purposely cut your hair, shave your head after you showered. See, that was a thing to try to break you. To make you realize, damn, dog, you just took a shower. Now you got all this hair stuck on you and everything. Now you got to go back to your cell and try to get it all off. Splash water all in you in the cell and everything. That's how they, they do certain things like that to try to break you. You know what I'm saying? So you got to prepare yourself through that. You know what I'm saying? Do whatever you can to get your mind off of your in confinement. And just look at it like, bro, I'm in prison. That's it. Because... The more things you do inside of prison, the less time you have to think about you being in the box. You see what I'm saying? And I know prison sucks definitely when it's compared to, you know, the streets or prison. But at the same time, you're going to find yourself when you are in prison, you're going to have so many things to do that you ain't going to have enough hours in a day to do them. You'll be like, oh, I'll just go down there tomorrow. Or yeah, and I'll, I'll slide there Tuesday and, and when I'm over there by medical and I'll grab, you know, you're going to have so many things lined up. It isn't like you're just sitting there tapping your, you know, your foot wondering what am I going to do in here? Time's passing. No, you're going to have so many things to do in there. You feel me? And when you're in confinement, it's like shit. They got to bring you your trays. You know what I'm saying? They got to escort you to shower. You know, they got to bring you your mail. You see what I'm saying? It's like makes the guards have to do their job that's why a lot of them are real petty and real pissed off because they're literally doing more job more work themselves now than the inmates because everything's getting brought to you now you see so all you got to do is just sit back there chin up and do the time that's it the time's going to go by regardless whether you're back there miserable or whether you ain't so you might as well just get a kick out of it i've told y'all before in videos i did about me being in confinement where i had a bunkie of mine and we drew like a football field on the ground out of soap you know what i'm saying and we put our deodorant sticks up and we grabbed some paper and made like a field goal we made the little football the little football paper things and we was playing football in the middle of our floor on shower night, the night that we knew that we were going to shower, we were like, shit, might as well get all sweaty in there. There's no AC. So we were in there fucking sweating, playing the football game on the floor. The guards came around, called other guards up to the thing, and we're like, look what these dudes are in here doing. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't believe it. But we were going to scrub our floor anyways that night because we can shower. You see what I'm saying? And it's easier like that, you know, than working out or, you know, getting all sweaty from cleaning deeply and you don't shower for two days. You know, you got your whole cell stinking up. So instead, you know, you, you learn to do it on the days that you know you're going to be able to hit that water. You feel me? But we've did so much fun stuff in there. You know, like I learned how to draw better when I was inside a confinement. Like I always had a little thing for drawing. A lot of people don't know this, but I know how to draw a little bit. So when I was locked up and I found myself inside of the box... You know, I was back there just drawing shit, you know, just anything. You might be looking in a magazine that you done read over 15 times. And next thing you know, you're sitting there and you're bored. You write a letter, you know, kill time by writing letters. That's another awesome way to, you know, to survive while you're in confinement. Or, you know, you might just start drawing things. Don't even know what it is. You're just going off of what's in your mind at the moment. And before you know it, you'll be like, damn, that'd be a fire. You can get out on the compound and someone will want to buy that and get it tattooed on them. And he'd be like, damn, I didn't even think, no, I was just in there drawing that shit, just bullshitting. And I was in there drawing it, you know what I'm saying? So I did a lot of like, you know, like drawing, writing, like writing letters, writing raps, you know what I'm saying? If you're somebody that doesn't know how to rap or sing or anything like that, you can start writing poems while you're inside of, you know, confinement. You know, poems be deep and they don't take that much skill, you know what I'm saying? You'll be able to write it the same way you want to word it. And before you know it, the more times you go over it as you're doing it, you're going to learn how to memorize it and ain't even going to have to read it off paper no more. You know what I'm saying? One of the best songs that people like on this channel, the one that's in my intro, Chain Gang Robbery, I wrote that while inside of prison. You see what I'm saying? And why? Because that's just what was going on around me. That was what I was going through. You see what I'm saying? So I literally was like, everything that's in there, you can literally learn about prison by listening to that entire song. I know it's just an intro, but if you look up Chain Gang Robbery on YouTube, you'll see the entire song. You know what I'm saying? And it literally breaks everything down about prison that I was going through while inside of prison. You see what I'm saying? So there's ways to get through, you know, solitary, confinement, 
the shoe, the hole, whatever y'all call it, wherever you're from. You feel me? I loved writing. So it was like, shit, y'all throw me in there. Now I ain't got nobody interrupting me like they would do inside the dorm while I'm over here practicing, you know, my lyrics and shit that I wrote down. Now I'm in the box where I got all the damn freedom and peace and quiet that I need. I'm just stuck in this cell. They'll let me know when it's time to eat, time to shower. It didn't really bother me. You know what I'm saying? As much. You know, now you do got, like I said in the beginning now of the video, you got you know, you got some days that get good that were worse before and then you got some days that get even worse than it was you know what i'm saying and i've had days back there where i go through it now where i stress everybody's gonna have that there's no way you're gonna make it through your entire box bid without dwelling and stressing you know you're gonna eventually be thinking and you're gonna eventually be like damn you know you done ran out of things to do ran out of things to write ran out of things to read you know you're gonna eventually stress this whole breakdown right here is ways for you to make it easier for you to cope and survive through confinement you know what i'm saying and once i did it the first time the first time was like the worst time of me ever going to the box because i had to learn it i had to see what it's truly like but let me take it back now when i was younger i went to the box when i was in djj you know the, when i got locked up as a juvenile i went to the box when i was in my juvenile program box county jail box so i kind of tried them all out anyways you know i've always been a knucklehead been hard-headed so i would land in these scenarios and i can't do nothing now but get through it you know so i knew what it was like being locked up and out of sight out of mind and being like kept away to where now i can't call home because you don't get no phone calls in the box you know what i'm saying so i kind of learned all that to where it wasn't that bad you know to me it was like shit it is what it is in my mind it's like by the time i get out of here boom y'all gave me 90 days all right these 90 days gonna be a long ass 90 days but one thing about it when i get out and i hit the compound again that's three months closer to going home that's how i would look at it you know because you ain't got time to worry about your release date when you're back there in the box you ass got time to worry about when the hell's child you know, or are they skipping us on showers and bucking us today for showers? Are they bucking us and not handing out the mail? You know, your, your, your mind's on so many other things that you ain't thinking about that release date. Like you are on the compound. When you're on the compound, you think about that release date. You see what I'm saying? So there's a lot of tactics you could do. Just keep yourself occupied and busy while you were in confinement. And before you know it, boom. You know what I'm saying? 277 days back on the pound. Here go for all, walking around. 277 days y'all you do the math how many months that is you feel me and to me it felt like an eternity it felt like i was back there forever you know what i'm saying it was like i did time and in the mix of doing time i did confinement time a stretch but i did a long stretch in confinement to where it was like you know it just it don't get any longer than that, you know, as far as like doing time, not saying you can't get a longer stretch in the box. You definitely can, but it's like you want your days to go by as quickly as possible when you're locked up, you know, box days go by even slower. And then in the box, I was pouring all nighters with my bunkies. My bunkies used to be like, damn, for all, why you ass be pouring all nighters in here? I'd be staying up till breakfast in the dark in that bitch, rhyming, doing whatever I got to do, mumbling to myself, my bunkie trying to sleep. You know, like in the dark, in the cell, you know, like I pulled all-nighters while in confinement, in prison. Those are like the most longest nights possible. You see, I kind of like took the bad and turned it good and learned how to cope with it. So any other time they try to threaten me with the box, shit, it is what it is. This shit ain't nothing, man. It's just a little couple speed bumps, man. At the end of the day, boy, I'm still headed towards that gate. You know, that's how I looked at it and that's how it is. You know, you got to go in there with a strong mindset because it is meant to try to break you. And after a while, you can start hallucinating. You know, you'll start seeing shit. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it does happen. You know what I'm saying? And I ended up doing that long stretch in the box because of K-Frog TV. When I first got caught due to the prison content. When they caught me with my prison videos and stuff like that, you know, when they, they didn't even catch me fully. They just do the pictures with machetes and hit the news and stuff like that. All you got to do is look up Florida inmate with a machete and you'll literally see a news clip inside a prison and it shows me and everything like that. You'll see that I went to confinement. 
You know, I ended up doing a box bid and they tried to railroad me. You feel me? So I learned a good thing I coped with it before because when they gave me that long stretch, you know, shit, I already had that shit under wrap. I already done did 60 and then a 60 and then a 30 and then a 60 and then a 15. So once they gave me that, bam, that hammer, Frog already knew how to do box time. You feel me? So it wasn't really that big of a thing to me. You see what I'm saying? You got to just go in there with a stronger mind. You know, when you're locked up inside a prison, you got to have a strong mindset. You understand? And at the end of the day, it's got to be stronger than it was when you were on the streets because you're locked up, you're incarcerated. You're going to be getting so many different characters throwing different, you know, moods and different, you know, things at you that you got to like shield yourself and you got to be strong because your body's going to be swinging with different mixed emotions of things that are going on on the streets and what you're missing out on, who's dying on the streets, who's passing away, what you're missing, whose birthdays and, you know, all this stuff to where you got to have your guard up. You see what I'm saying? And you got to be tough. That's what it is. And when you find yourself in confinement, you got to do the same thing. It's like, okay, let me put this vest on, you know, because I've had this vest on now that I'm locked up in prison. It's time to, you know, vest up inside of prison. Now I'm in confinement. It's time to put that armor, huh? You feel me? Suit up. That's, that's, the, that's the best way I can break it down for y'all, man. So I hope the people that, you know, dropped it in the comments, you know, I hope this is a good enough, you know, break down how I survive confinement might work for some other people but I'm gonna start trying to answer people in the comment sections in my videos more often so y'all stay tuned y'all look forward to that anything y'all want to talk about about this situation whatever y'all's opinion is however you did box time if you ever got locked up before or if you heard how somebody you knew did box time or anything drop it in the comment section man everybody's watching everybody's reading believe it or not even if nobody hits your like of your comment or if nobody responds to it trust me i look at the you know i look at the the breakdown of the analytics and i know when people are looking at it, I know, and I want to let y'all know the comment section does go a long way. Alrighty, that's all I got for y'all today, man. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all know, like I always say, make sure you keep them rat squares, clowns, chomos, pedos, gunners, wannabe island boys, and clout chasers out your circle. And until next time, this the one and only, I am my team, Frog. I'm a criminal, I'm a cool nigga, but I got a limit though I'm a cool nigga, but I got a limit though Cause I'm a criminal, yeah I'm a criminal